coverage is experienced in rehabilitation of companies suffering from natural disasters in many areas. Let's go listen in to their expertise. For those uh, company or factories which are not yet uh, affected by the water, what should they do then? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that sandbagging alone is going yes. to help um, uh -huh. a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. So what I'm advising my clients in this case is to mm -hmm. be very conscious of moving equipment mm -hmm. up one floor or two floors if mm -hmm. that's an option for your factory. Mm -hmm. um, if you have alternative sites that you could move to now, mm -hmm. uh, start doing that now while you can still drive trucks in and out. Uh, we've yes. seen some pictures mm -hmm. um, of people trying to move things through with boats. Yes. Um, that's a very slow, yes. costly process. The same for raw materials? Yeah, if they, if they are getting raw materials and they have raw material storage locations, mm. a lot of that can be very badly damaged by water. Mm. So finding other locations for that to go now would be uh -huh. a good idea. Mm. Or even talking with your suppliers mm -hmm. and asking the suppliers to hold off mm. on the deliveries or the shipments. I see. Um, what, mm -hmm. yeah. what about the workers? So far, up to more than half a million workers probably out of work temporarily because of the shutdown or the factory in flooded area. So what do you advise on manage uh, the human resources? Yeah, that, that's going to be very critical in a place like Thailand yes. where the relationship mm -hmm. between the factory owners and the managers and the workers mm -hmm. is so important. Yes. Um, the other thing you should note as part of your question is that in many factories, the companies have invested a lot in training yes. with specialist mm -hmm. technical skills these staff. Mm -hmm. If these staff can't continue to be paid mm -hmm. or aren't communicated with, um, many of them will go home to yes. their home families, to their home villages, mm -hmm. perhaps in the northeast of Thailand where mm -hmm. there's not as much flooding as in the central plains. Mm -hmm. So they might be able to find temporary jobs up there, mm -hmm. which then creates a problem for the company in the flood zone, mm -hmm. when they want to get started again, mm -hmm. they're going to have to try and find all these resources again. I see. Um, so communicating with the employees now and setting up communication systems yes. and involving these people and in mm -hmm. some cases even the communities and the families mm -hmm. in the company's response, I think would be very important. Mm -hmm. Even though your companies may not be directly affected yet, right, but precaution uh, should be taken. Yep. What about uh, start with the government first? So we have the Fraught Relief Operation Command or short for FORC, Fraught. Some complaints, some criticism. What about you? In your opinions, they're doing a fine job so far? Um, as I said at the start, I think that the Thai government and yes. country as a whole normally does very well with floods. Yes. This year it is a very exceptional amount of water. Mm -hmm. um, however, I think that some mistakes have been made mm. within the government uh, groups yes. and I think that's, the single, that's my biggest concern is mm. that at the moment there seem to be multiple government groups yes. running the crisis, mm. providing resources mm -hmm. and critically providing communication mm. and some of the communication messages don't match. Yes. I advise my clients and my companies, mm -hmm. one person is in charge, one person does mm -hmm. communication. And that's what I would be advising the government to be doing here. Okay. There should be one group. I don't mind whether it's the FROC or the BMA or some mm -hmm. other groups. Yes. There should be one group running this. Mm -hmm. There should be one person in charge and there mm -hmm. should be one communication mm -hmm. person doing all of the communicating mm -hmm. on the public, in, at least in the public media. I see. So at least it's not still not too late to... I, I think that some of the water, from what I've been told about Thailand's geography, mm. yes. some of this flood water may stay for some considerable time. Mm -hmm. So I think this crisis is not a one or a two day crisis. This is going to last for some time. Weeks, so it's definitely months. not too late. I see. I, it could be months. I see. So the, the, what, what is your estimated timeline for the business recovery process now? Do you have any idea? As well, the, the, the customers that I've spoken to already, mm -hmm. um, some of them lived through the 1995 floods. Mm -hmm. and they're quite bad. Yeah, but they're, this one is worse. They're telling me yes. that this one is probably twice as bad uh -huh. in terms of level of the water for them. Mm -hmm. And so they're planning, they're expecting Yes. Um, something like two months before mm -hmm. their factory will be 
uh, dry or, or no water mm -hmm. drained completely and then they're going to have to start ordering equipment and so on and so on. They think for the rebuilding their factory, yes. they would be operating, they would take another three to six months after mm -hmm. the water leaves. Mm. So my estimates for most factories now are something like three to six months. From now. From now. Mm. Um, so that will be March or even April next year. Yes, yes. So, uh, I, I, so in terms of economic impact, yes. supply chain impact, um, and tax revenue for the Thai government, yes. I think this is going to be a significant mm. uh, impact, um, some sort of slowdown of the economy. I, I'm not a detailed economist, so I can't yes. say whether it's 1% or 2%, yes. but I think it's, it's certainly more than zero. Mm. Um, and I think that there, unfortunately, there will be a number of companies that don't have the appropriate insurances, mm or lose their customers as mm -hmm. a result of not being able to supply or mm -hmm. lose their workers, mm -hmm. so lose their ability to produce, mm -hmm. that will go out of business. So in your opinion, what the insurance, uh, insurance company should do uh, in this kind of critical situation? Uh, the insurance companies should certainly yes. be open and try to respond as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. However, the typical response for an insurance company we, the, for a factory type uh, client of theirs yes. is that they're going to send loss adjusters mm. to come in, assess the damage, advise the client, mm. help them recover as quickly as they can. Mm. It's actually a very good service that they provide. Yes. However, in this case, with so many factories disrupted at the same time, mm -hmm. many of the insurance companies will have a problem bringing in sufficient individuals to help do that mm. adjustment process. Mm. Unfortunately, I think for some companies this will mean mm -hmm. that their recovery process will be slowed down just by the insurance providers mm -hmm. asking them to slow down so that they can plan this best. I, um, I think there's some other things that the insurance companies can do in the future to help, um, yes. but right now it, it's all about you know, insurance companies bringing in enough people. Mm. Um, this highlights one of the other problems for Thailand, yes. uh, which I know was raised during the tsunami, mm -hmm. which is foreign people coming into this country need uh -huh. to get work permits and visas. Yes. Um, these insurance companies will mm -hmm. need to bring in many individuals from Additional overseas people. countries. Mm -hmm. the, th the, the government process yes. it requires them to go through the visa process and mm -hmm. the work permit process before they can do something. I see. Normally that takes a week or more mm -hmm. uh, and normally it's designed for people who are going to be here for a year, mm -hmm. which may not be the case here. <laughs> so. Um, so, so that highlights some of the problems. If, and my reports from this morning were that yes. the Chang Watana area mm -hmm. um, is likely to be underwater, mm -hmm. that's all the visa processing for Bangkok. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, if you take this massive flooding as a big lesson, what Thailand can learn uh, from it and what should be the longer term strategy for the country, for the government and the private sector? Yeah, I, I think from a flooding perspective, certainly yes. the government could improve the whole water management process in Thailand. Uh -huh. um, I think the, we've highlighted a number of weaknesses over the last couple of days. Yes. I think the government certainly needs to improve their crisis management processes and skills mm. um, and I think the government certainly needs to improve the communication uh, around that. Um, as I say, I think there should only be one spokesperson. Some of the previous crisis, mm. um, there was one spokesperson and that worked very well. Yes. Um, I also think that the government should be increasing the regulations mm -hmm. um, in this area and requiring companies to have business continuity plans in place all the time. Mm. As a law, as a new regulations, yes. how does it work in other countries? Uh, for example, Singapore requires a, yes. a lot of companies to have business continuity plans in place mm. and do regular audits of this and they have to comply with international standards. Mm. The Japanese companies are very good at this. Australia yes. has some regulations for certain industries. Mm -hmm. The US has regulations in place for all listed companies. Mm -hmm. and, but the leader is probably the UK. Yes. Um, England has in place some of the strongest laws mm -hmm. for business continuity. Mm -hmm. And they have the most skilled individuals in teaching people how to do this. Mm -hmm. For example, if you are a listed company on the stock exchange of Thailand, you must have a business continuity plan in place 
every year. I or, did audited, updated. doing doing an exercise at least mm. once or twice every so you, year, training your managers. Mm. So you know what to do when there's a disaster like this one. Correct. And and I should say there that no planning or exercises will ever yes. work exactly how you think. Mm -hmm. um, but just the training for the management team in thinking yes. about these processes gets mm -hmm. them better prepared for mm -hmm. these scenarios in the future. I see. So thank you, Mr. Andrew, for joining our program during this critical time. No problem. Thank you very much. Follow Towards 2015, open up to the ASEAN market every Wednesday and Thursday from 10.30 to 11 p.m. on ASEAN TV. And you can also follow us online via Facebook only on ASEAN TV.